I really hope I'm missing something, but I just don't think that's the case. Stick around, and we'll get right to it. Hey, welcome back, guys. Jason, KM4ACK. When the FTX was announced, I was super stoked about this radio. In fact, the very first day you could get on the reservation list, I put my $35 down. And then when HRO called, well, I gladly paid the fee to get this radio shipped right to my door. Now, I'd already seen Josh's review video, or his kind of first look video, right before Hamcation, and I was absolutely ecstatic to see APRS built into the FTX. That was totally unexpected. I hadn't heard anybody mention that up until his video. Even better was Yezu went back to the QWERTY keyboard. So I was really excited to get this in my hands. Unfortunately, well, it's just, I'm either missing something or it's just not quite fully baked. Let's take a look at two issues, and one of them is a super, well, actually, I think both of these are major issues. Let's take a look at the first one. Okay, so the first issue I noticed revolved around APRS messages. So I'm going to go ahead and go into uh, the message list right here with APRS, and you'll see that I sent this radio a message from one of my HTs. Here's the interesting part of this. There's no way to reply to this message. You get top, delete, and unread right here. And I thought, okay, maybe we got to go into the message. So let's click into the message. And, well, there's no option to reply here either. I have pushed and long pressed every single button on this radio, and I cannot find a way to make this happen. So I don't know what the deal is. Um, I, I hope I'm just dumb and overlooking something, but I absolutely cannot figure out how to reply to an APRS message. Now, to make it even worse, if we go into, uh, and I apologize, I thought I'd cut all that volume down. Let's try that. Uh, let's go into APRS settings and I'm trying to remember where this is. Is it right here? Yep, yeah, right here. And then let's go down. We've got a message template right here under the APRS settings. So this is where on uh, you should be able to just set up a quick message that you want to use maybe in a reply or something like that. You can see I put uh, 73, this is KM4ACK in this particular message slot. You uh, can always define four, five, six different kind of canned messages. And we can do that right here but there's no way to insert these into a, a reply because I can't figure out how to reply on this radio I literally think they forgot to put a reply option in the APRS messages all right so maybe I'm just not smart enough to figure out how to reply to a message I'll give you that I'll accept that if anybody else can figure it out please point it out down in the comments below but here's the other issue that I'm running into. This radio just doesn't seem to decode the APRS messages. I'm not sure exactly what's going on with it, but I've compared it to a couple of other radios and tried to make the test criteria as close as I possibly could when I'm putting, say, an antenna on one radio versus an antenna on the FTX. Let's take a look at two or three different clips to give you guys an idea of exactly what I'm seeing. All right, so let's take a look at the radios real quick. First, the D75, and you will see that it has no stations decoded, which is exactly what I want to see at this point in the test. Uh, same thing on the FTX. Let's go to the station list, and you'll see that that is completely blank as well. Hopefully, there's not too much of a uh, shadow or a uh, reflection on that. So let's get out of that. And at the same time, I'm going to start Direwolf on the other computer. You'll see that the D75 just decoded its first object. I'm going to go ahead and start Direwolf. Uh, what we've got going here is I've got the APRS modem running as indicated by the A12 right here in the FTX. I also have this connected to 
the computer with a USB cable so that I'm feeding all of the data out of this radio and into the laptop that's just off screen to the left. The uh, Kenwood radio is just running a very short, almost rubber duck style antenna. The FTX has a signal stick with a 90 degree uh, connector on it. You can probably see it right there in the thing. So I want to let this run for about 45 minutes because initially what I'm seeing is the FTX is just not decoding very many stations at all. So I want to let this run for about 45 minutes. Let's see what kind of a difference we get out of Direwolf versus what we get out of the FTX versus what we get out of the Kenwood with a little short rubber duck antenna. And we'll come back and kind of take a look at this uh, after about that 45 minute mark or so. All right, so we're just past 45 minutes in this experiment. I'm going to hit the back button to get uh, that off of the screen there. Let's see, that radio is there. All right, let's take a look and see exactly what the Yezu has decoded. So uh, let's see, press this one and then a station list. And I have exactly one decoded message. All right, now, maybe it's not the radio. Maybe there's something going on today. So let's take a look at the D75. And in fact, let me move this over here a little bit closer for you. And adjust that camera just slightly. And let's take a look at this. So this is the message list off of the D75. And... As you can see, we've got a total of eight decodes on this radio with a shorter antenna, mind you. All right, let's jump over and take a look at Direwolf now. Now, remember, Direwolf is connected to the FTX-1 radio. And let's just start scrolling back up through here and look at all of the decodes. Now, granted, Direwolf is even going to show you duplicates, which would be suppressed on the radio. Uh, but look at all the decodes I'm getting in Direwolf. Hooked up to the exact same FTX that's not decoding this stuff on the radio itself. So I'm not sure. Maybe it's user error somewhere, but I'm just not seeing it. Uh, if somebody thinks that I missed something in this little test, well, by all means, please point it out because I am always willing to learn something. And if I can learn how this radio or how to make this radio decode better, I definitely want to do that. All right, one more test because I just wanted to pull out as many variables as I possibly could and try to make sure that uh, maybe my Digipeter itself was not overloading the front end. So what I've done is I've turned my Digipeter off uh, this morning. Now, taking a quick look at the APRS settings, you'll see that the modem is on the subband uh, for this test, and you will also see that I've got uh, 144.390 running on the subband. Let's go ahead and fire up the FT5. Uh, it'll take it a minute to get a GPS slot, but I don't think that'll matter for decoding. And hopefully, not too much of a glare this morning, and you're going to be able to see. Uh, decodes happening on the FT5 as well as if we get any decodes on the FTX. So we're going to sit here. There may be some jumps around in the video because I'm not going to make you guys watch a bunch of uh, uh, time here when there's no packets coming in, but I will cut back over every time we get a decode on one of the radios. Now you will notice that the uh, FT5 just transmitted its beacon and that was decoded on the FTX. So that looks good and that's why I don't think it's a front end overload because these radios are sitting literally side by side and we're running the exact same antenna on both radios. Uh, that's the signal stick antenna by signal stuff. Uh, so I'm trying to take out absolutely as many variables as I possibly can. Let's let this sit here for a few minutes and see what we get. All right, we just got our first decode over here on the FT5. That's NT4UX-2. 
Uh, I did not see that at all on the FTX. Uh, I'm getting a lot of uh, weak APRS stations that's not being decoded on either radio, so I'll throw those out. And it is a bit of a slow period right now for APRS. Uh, it's fairly early on a Sunday morning, so not a lot of people out moving around. Uh, maybe sitting out here for a little bit. But again, I'm going to try to cut out as much of the boring stuff as I can for you guys. All right, there's another packet. This is a duplicate this time on the FT5 that got decoded. I didn't see anything again on the FTX. All right, there's another decode on the uh, FT5. There's a second decode on the FT5. And again, the FTX did not see either one of those stations. All right, and there's another duplicate packet decoded over here. Nothing over here. Now, I've been out here for about 10 minutes. Again, it's super slow APRS-wise uh, this morning, this early on a Sunday morning. But let's just take a quick look at this. Let's get over to the station list. And you can see uh, five of them that's been decoded. Let's see if we can scroll down that list. And I've got a, yeah, a total of five stations decoded. Now, some of those were multiples, decoded multiple times, so they don't show up but once. But five decoded packets here. Let's see what we've got on the FT5. Let's see if I can get you guys down there. All right, let's take a quick look at this. And let's see exactly, uh, whoop, wrong button. Uh, let's take a look at the station list. And yeah, one station again, and that's my FT5 sitting right beside this radio. All right, so there you have it. That's what I'm seeing with APRS. Now, I still love this radio. The sound quality coming out of the radio is fabulous. I've had good audio reports from others that I've contacted using this radio. I just wish they uh, would have either left APRS out completely or made it so it actually works. Again, maybe I'm missing something, but I don't think so. Hopefully, this can be fixed with a firmware update in the near future. If you found today's information helpful, be sure to give us a thumbs up before you head off. We will see you guys on the next one. Until then, 7-3.